Okay, so do you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to transfer one piece of data from one system to another one, but you realize you don't have any thumb drives sitting around and you don't have an FTP client set up on one of the devices, whether that's because you can't install anything on that device or if it's just because you haven't gotten around to it. And for me, I tend to find this happening more often than it probably should, mainly because I tend to lose my thumb drives. I don't know where they go. They just disappear every couple of months and then pop up when I don't need them. So what if there was a better way to address this by basically setting up a very simple server and then connecting to that with programs you already have installed on your system? Well, it turns out there is a way to do this and we're gonna be doing this with a program by the name of OneShot, which basically sets up a OneShot HTTP server which can connect to with any sort of regular HTTP client so curl or more commonly going to be something like your web browser now what I mean by a one-shot HTTP server is basically that the first thing that connects to it that's the only thing that can connect to it and then after that the server basically shuts down obviously there are tons of other methods we could use as well but this method is dead simple to set up so let's have a look at how it would work now the first thing I'm going to do is open up my terminal and just run one shot. So if we just run it like this, it's not really going to do too much. So this has actually started up an HTTP server on the IP address 192.168.0.8. So that is the IP address of this computer on my local network. And it started it on port 8080. So port 8080, if I remember correctly, is the default port for HTTP. So if I try to connect to this, it's not really going to do anything over my web browser. And that's because this server is just a basic server that isn't actually doing anything. It just exists to let you connect to it. So to actually do something productive with this, what we have to do is pass some of the options in or pass a file into it. So let's try that out now. Now, if I just kill the server off, as you can see, it stopped running in my terminal over here. And then over my web browser, it says it basically can't connect to it. So let's have a look at the basic usage of this. So the basic usage is basically run one shot and then pass a file into it. So we'll just pass in this image right here. Yeah, we'll just do this one. Okay, so now that we've run it again, you don't really see much else changing from the terminal, but let's go over my web browser and connect to this IP address again. And as you can see, it's gone and instantly downloaded this image. And over on my terminal, it basically will show you what actually happened. So it says we've actually connected to it, then it starts the transfer, transfer complete and then it basically just gives you some information about where it went to, the rate of the download and a bunch of other things that might be of interest to you. And as we can see over here, it's gone and downloaded it to my downloads directory. So CD into downloads and the file was called something like 7701 something or other. This one right here, I was testing it off camera so that's why there's two of them here. And we just run that. And as you can see, that's the same image we just saw. So as we can see, it has successfully downloaded to our downloads directory, but this isn't the only way that it can be used. Now, because it's just a basic HTTP server, you can actually connect to it from anything that has an HTTP client. So even something like a phone. So let's test that out then. Let's just run the same command. And this time I'll connect to it on my phone. So I'll cut back to when that's done. Okay, so on my phone right now, it says it's actually downloaded. So if I just open that up, give it a second, and there we go. Image is downloaded perfectly fine. So OneShot doesn't care at all what's going to connect to it, whether that be a phone, a computer, your TV, a, I don't know, a microwave, whatever has an HTTP client on it, anything that connects to this IP address and to this port, it's going to accept. Now, because of this, what I'm going to say is don't ever use this on public Wi-Fi or really on any network that you don't trust and you don't know the devices that are actually on that network, especially when we get to some of the stuff later where you can actually upload a file to the server. In those cases, definitely do not run it on public Wi-Fi or on an untrusted network because you can very easily download a file that you really, really don't want to download. So as long as you heed that warning, basically everything should be fine. Now, another thing you may want to do with OneShot is change the port that it's actually using because by default, it's going to connect to 8080. And because of that, you can't actually run multiple instances at the same time. So let's say we start up at the server again. So as you can see, it's on port 8080. And let's in a second terminal, start it up again. So if we just run it again, as you can see, it's going to try to start it up on port 8080. Now it says that it's listening on that port, but as you'll see in just a moment, it's not actually doing that. So if we connect to this IP address, as you're gonna see, it downloads from the first server. Okay, so that's fine. 
but let's say we connect to it again. Now, when we connect to it again, it's not actually gonna connect to this server right here. So as you can see, it's still listening, nothing has connected to it. And this is because basically you can't have two applications running on the same port. And for whatever reason, this application doesn't error out if something else is connected to that port. So it's gonna keep trying to run, but you're never actually gonna be able to connect to it. So what you should do is start this up on a different port. So let's just start it up on a port that I know I'm not using. So something like, I don't know, port 30,000. So that's probably gonna be a safe port to use. So if we connect to this now, as you're gonna see, successfully downloaded. So it's very easy to look online to see the list of ports that are commonly being used and list of ports that are pretty much free game for any application to take. Now, if you wanna be certain that you're the only one who's actually gonna be able to download what is actually being put onto the HTTP server, what you should do is set up a username and a password. So that's pretty easy to set up as well. If we just run one shot and this time pass in the dash u option. This will just set a username. So this time we'll just set the username to Brody. And if we set the dash w option, what this is gonna do is prompt us for a password before we actually start up the server. So if we just run this now, let's set the password to something like password, which is a very safe password. Now this application does do something that it probably shouldn't do. As you can see, it's not actually hiding the password down here, it probably should be doing that, but it's only really a little problem because this is just gonna be a one-shot server. So assuming someone isn't standing over your shoulder as you're setting up the server, it's probably gonna be fine. But if you're gonna be using this application frequently, I would recommend not using the same password every single time unless you're going to encrypt the password. So if we just run it like this, and then we go and connect to this IP address, now, before it does anything, what it's gonna do is prompt us for a username and a password. So let's just put in the username as Brody. Let's just put in the password wrong, actually, and see what it's gonna do. As you can see, it didn't actually let us connect to it. So does it show anything over here? Yes, it does. So as you can see, it tried to connect without providing a password, connected with invalid username and password. Okay, let's try to connect again, but this time put in the correct credentials. So Brody and password. And now we sign in. And as you can see, successfully downloaded the image and over on the terminal here, it's connected to it, transfer progress, and then the transfer complete information we saw before. Now you can also set the server up as an HTTPS server as well by using one shot dash dash TLS dash key, and then setting up your TLS key and then dash dash TLS dash cert and setting up a TLS certificate. But that's kind of outside of the scope of this video. If you wanna learn about that, I'll leave a link to the GitHub page down below where you can see how that works with OneShot. And if you're just gonna be using the basic HTTP authentication, you can, instead of writing out the password on your terminal with the dash W option, you can pass in the dash capital P option and pass in a password file. Okay, so everything we've seen up until this point has been about sending a file from this device to another device. But let's say you wanted to reverse that and actually receive a file on this device. So this would be an instance where say, you have a separate computer that has a file that you wanna transfer from that computer to this one. But on that computer, for whatever reason, you can't install an FTP client on it and you don't have any thumb drives. So the way this works is what you would do on this system where you can install stuff is you would run one shot dash u and then basically pass in where you want the file to be downloaded to. So in this case, we're just gonna be downloading the file to my current directory, which is my home directory. Okay, so as you can see, nothing has really changed from this point, but if we go and connect to this IP address, what it's basically gonna do is set up a very, very simple interface where you can go and upload a file or send some text. So if we just choose a file to upload, and let's say we wanna upload this thumbnail right here. So as you can see, we open that up and I don't know how well you can see that. The file we've chosen here is thumbnail.png. So if we go and upload this now, basically this server is no longer gonna work. And if we go back over to the terminal, the transfer has complete. So if we just go look for that file, so thumbnail.png, as you can see that file is now located in my home directory. And then we go and open this up. And as you can see, it's that image we just sent. So the way that would work with text is let's just reopen that server up and let's reconnect to this as well. So let's just send over the text, hello world. Now, if we go and upload this, 
So when we went and uploaded that, it didn't actually have a file name associated with it. So what it has to do is actually decide what the file name is going to be. And in this case, the file name is 5e4b93a6. I'm not sure how it decides on this name. It may just be a randomly generated name. So another way that you can receive information is just receiving it to standard out. So if instead of passing in a directory, what we do is we just pipe it to some other application, like let's say less. What that's going to do is basically as soon as we get the file, it's going to open up less with whatever the information was. So if we just run it like this, as you can see, it doesn't show us the IP address because automatically what it's going to try to do is run less. And if we go connect to this now, it still gives us the option to actually upload something. So let's say we want to upload, what do I have that's text? So let's go with this random readme file we have right here. So if we go and upload this, as you can see, it's gone and successfully done it and go back over to the terminal. It's basically opened up that file within less. Now, obviously there's not really any point to run this on a single computer, but this has kind of just been for demonstrative purposes. So now that we've sent this over, if we go and close this, it won't have actually saved that file anywhere. So if we go and have a look in my home directory and we go look for that file, actually that was a bad example because this file is actually in my home directory. This is the original file we sent. This isn't anything that we just downloaded. So if we send the file and then we pipe it instantly to standard out, the file isn't actually gonna get saved on our computer. And we can also receive a file in our web browser. Now, this works in a very similar way to receiving it to standard out. So what it's gonna do is download the file, but it's not actually gonna save it onto your system. So let's just run this and see what I mean. So if we just run it with this file right here, this is an image right here. It's the same image we were using before. So if we go and connect to this server now, as you'll see, it's gone and downloaded the image into our web browser, but it's not actually being saved onto our system. But because it is in my web browser, I can go and save it if I wanted to, but we don't necessarily have to. So this will really depend on whatever you're using as your browser. So in Brave, I could do things like pictures, I can do PDFs, I can do MP4s, MP3 files, and a bunch of other sort of file types, but it really depends on the sort of browser that you're actually using. One other thing you could do is open up an HTML page if you wanted to. So say if you wanted to have some sort of one-shot website for whatever reason, I'm not really sure why you would ever want to do that. I'm sure someone can come up with some weird use case for that. Maybe you're trying to mess with someone or something like that. But generally, having a one-shot website isn't too useful, I guess. Someone's probably going to correct me on that and say that they've got some we really weird use case for it that it actually does make it really useful. But I can't think of a use case. If someone knows one, let me know down below, though. And the last thing I want to mention is you can also pipe data into OneShot. So let's say you wanted to send something like, I don't know, your fonts list to another computer for, I, I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but let's say you wanted to do that. So fc-list is a really long command and there's a bunch of information in it. So let's say we want to send this over somewhere. So what we can do is fc-list and then pipe that into one shot. Now you don't have to do this part, but it is kind of recommended just so you know what you're actually sending. So if you do the dash lowercase n option, you can give the file a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it fonts.txt and if we go and connect to this right now what it's going to try and do is try to download this file so as you can see it's trying to download fonts.txt and let's save this i don't know to my home directory and then let's actually have a look at this so fonts.txt has downloaded open this up and as you can see this is my full fonts list so that also has worked perfectly fine now one thing you might be considering is sending multiple files which Technically you can't do, but you also technically can do. So what I mean by this is what you can do is basically just send an archive. So whether that be a zip, a RAR, a tar, whatever it is you want to use, if you want to send multiple files, you have to send them as an archive, which isn't really that big of a deal. One shot isn't really designed to send multiple files. If you want to send multiple files, that's where you want to use something like FTP or something a bit more beefier. And the last thing I want to mention is the installation. Now over on the GitHub page, there's not really much to say about it. So you can either download the binary by doing the curl method or obviously going and downloading it yourself. You can install it with brew if you're on macOS. You can use goget or you can just compile it from source. And there's also some Windows installation stuff in here as well. Now, the way that I went and installed this is by doing the compile from source because there's not actually a version of this available in the AUR, at least 
from what I know. I haven't been able to find it. If there is and I just missed it, then go and install it from the AUR, but I'm pretty sure there's not. So if there's not, if I feel like it, I might put it on the AUR myself. I'm not really sure. And there's also a bunch of other options that I didn't cover today because I feel like they're sort of outside of the scope of what I really want to talk about. So stuff like configuring the CGI environment and things like that, which I'm not really too sure on how that works. I haven't really looked into CGI configuration. And there's other stuff like exit on fail, or you can set a different mime string if the file you're sending doesn't actually have a properly defined mime string. And various other things like this that I didn't really feel like covering. So if you want to check those out, they'll be on the GitHub page. And also they'll be available on the help page for OneShot. So OneShot-H, and that will bring up the help page and that gives you the exact same information. So either on the GitHub page or by just running OneShot-H, whatever you prefer doing. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. Now, OneShot seems like a pretty useful application. I try to keep thumb drives around, but as I said earlier in the video, they tend to disappear very, very quickly. Now, I've got one on my desk right now, and I don't know how long this will be here for, because I'm probably going to put it somewhere, and I'll forget that I put it there, and then I'll need it, and whatever. Anyway. That's kind of why I like OneShot, because if I need to transfer a file from, say, this computer over to my laptop, or from my laptop over to this computer, it's much easier than trying to track down one of these when I really need it. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say, but before I go, I wanted to thank my patrons. So a special thank you, Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter the Road, Tony Donald, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, you can go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute, and remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.